Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second Saturday Night Live from me. Um, so we did have a request for um, for what Good I'm going evening. to be doing tonight, welcome which to is you. the water drop bowl. And if you hang on, I'll just switch off my... That's it, switch off the sound on the YouTube. Uh, yeah, so uh, doing the water drop bowl tonight, I have already got one prepared. The one I've got prepared is a diff different colour to the one I'm actually going to do. Um, so the one that I'm, I should say the one that I'm finishing off tonight is in a different colour. But it just goes to show that you don't have to stick to the blues when you're doing uh, water drop bowls. You can use different colours as well. Um, so I'll bring the guys in. And here we are. We have got Shug. Hey. Uh, we have got we have got deal audio off um mind the gap or oh, audio yeah. back on and we've got Bye, make, making a better life uh, so they're going to keep me up to date with the chat jamie might be in at some point he is busy earworming for for jake on jake's patreon at the moment so um he might be in at some point but he is feeling a bit under the weather so he might not so change camera and let's have a look at what we've got on the lathe tonight. So what I've got on, it's a piece of ash. It is 11 inches diameter. It'll end up around about one and a half uh, deep. Uh, I'll get on and start doing some turning. And uh, the guys can keep me up to date with what's going on in the chat. Radio, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you which lunatics have, have have joined us on this this warm yet wet Saturday evening here in certainly in the UK. Um <clears throat> out in the chat, among the gorgeous, beautiful individuals we have out there, we have Barry Chetty, we have Clint at Wood Dancers, we have Di Prout and uh, <laughs> don't know where I was going with that Di. I'll start again. We've got Di Prout Crawford. <laughs> 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 Jay's wood turning. Jennifer at Craft Creations. We think that's the real Jennifer. Um, <coughs> Katie's Shed. Lawrence Begida, Linda O'Reilly. Malcolm Douglas. Martin at Woody's Creations. Mike Lang. Neil M. Paul Hutton. Um, Peter Corrick and Roger Mills. The Ruby Claire. Spirit and Bear. Probably cares. Might be Phil. Probably cares. Steve Ellis. Stuart and Julia. Terry Bartlett. TJ Turning. Todd at Glencove Woodworks, Wayne Hillman, Wayne the Woodturner, and Wyvie Woodshed. I think Alex Lambie snuck in there, and so did the ever-lovely Chris and Michael Hesseltine. So did Buster West. I think Jay's Cabin ducked in a little bit there too as the start of this. If I missed anyone else, welcome. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for coming along. So one of the things that we're doing on the Saturday night show is that we're getting requests in for what people would like to see the following Saturday. Now I've already had one request in from Darren. He did that on Friday to do some small uh, pieces for craft fairs and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing next Saturday night. I don't think that's going to take very long. Um, so people can actually put in the chat anything else that the fancy seeing, seeing us do next week. I know Jennifer wants me to do um, one of the crackle effect balls, so if you'd like to see me do one of the crackle effect balls, stick <coughs> that in the chat and I'll do that next Saturday as well. I'd like to see you doing some Irish dancing while turning a ball. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got two hopes of that and one of them's Bob. <laughs> and the other one. It's, it's a request. I mean, you did say you make request. I wasn't expecting you to grant it. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, we've got William Brown joining the chat. Uh, Neil M, Peter the Park Woodturner, uh, and Dave Gatton. We have Sixty-nine beautiful individuals watching. Right, Remember, if you like what Wayne's doing, um, please, please, please hit that thumbs up. Um, and if you really like what he's doing, you'd like to say thank you for all the effort he puts into this. Um, why not hit the link at the top of the chat where you can buy the man a coffee? 
is typically a wine, but we tell everybody it's a coffee because that's what it's often like. It's really a wine, so you could have it and get it, buy my coffee. And, and buy my coffee, and a man of coffee. He likes coffee. He likes wine flavored, flavored coffee. If you're here for the first time on this wonderful Saturday night, please, please, please hit that subscribe button and give that notification bell a bit of a ring. Mike Lang is positively delighted he's been declared beautiful. <laughs> he's got slightly too excited about it, if you ask me. That's that's a bit of a, bit of a strange thing. Paul Hutton is requesting crackle effect. Okay. Brian Hartwood turning and snuck in. Hiya, Brian. I think Trevor P popped in. Mike Lang has declared the thing. Thanks, I'm flirting with everybody in the room. You know what? That would be a star turn. 66 people being flirted with all at the same time. My word. What an achievement. <laughs> and now probably a slot on Brett's got talent for that Martin says we'll watch anything you turn Wayne I suggest you try turning your coffee cup round three times <laughs> as long as it's not flavoured coffee as long as it's wine flavoured coffee <laughs> oh, it can be coffee flavoured coffee <laughs> Lighted panels popped in, says Aim High. Wally Pie popped in too. Good evening. Thanks everybody for coming along. I'll just get sorted with the the mortars for the bottom. Uh, and Darren is putting the call out for Benjamin. Um, George W. Jones is saying, I'm usually pretty quiet, but love what you guys do. Thank Rex you, George. In the chat. Hey, Rex. Right. Uh -oh. Martin said, oh, Martin the said, uh oh, he said you could always. He means, you know, you could. I mean, you could always turn something in resin. He says. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Oh, you need a I just had to, I just had to sit down there for a minute. Somebody mentioned <laughs> resin. You need. You, you want to have a rant? You want to have a rant about it? <laughs> no, right? no, 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 no. I have turned resin in the past a few times. Uh, Lionel and Jigsy have joined as well. Hey, uh, hey guys. Johnny boy, Johnny boy. John, we know that you're a man of, who works with animals. Do you give them voices in your head like Johnny Morris? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I may confuse John because he may not have seen Johnny Morris or them having a, a slightly more southern um, um, ancestry. Now, people sometimes ask about the depth the turners do their mortises. Um, it doesn't have to be that deep as long as it's, as long as it fits in the chuck properly. So, I think my batteries are running out on this. This is, that's four mil. The depth of that mortise is four mil. So it doesn't have to be that deep as long as it fits in the chuck properly. George Jigsy's saying, <clears throat> well, he tends to just work from behind the computer as an admin. It's the wife that works with the animals. I think she believes she hears them speak. <laughs> <laughs> Way to scare the question. Is he talking about his kids there or actual animals? Hey, I'm, 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 I'm taking the fifth. Uh, there's no, no way I'm getting into that conversation. <laughs> uh, 
Folks, if you like what Wayne's doing, please hit that thumbs up and give that subscribe button a bit of a press if you haven't already. Um, at the top of the chat, you'll find a link to Wayne's wine flavored Buy Me a Coffee, um, where you can say thank you for all the hard work that uh, Wayne puts into this and allow him to relax with a bit of a red after the show is done. Um, yeah, please, please, please hit that thumbs up. Jigsy says, definitely animals, the kids are just stubborn. <laughs> Alex of Wid and Things is in as well. Hi, Alex. I was wild and things. I was thinking, good lord. Who's sounding like Darth yes. Vader? Might want to drop Probably your mic. Me. <laughs> Probably me. Remember, folks, as Wayne said earlier on, Saturday night is a request slot. Um, so if there's anything you'd like Wayne to do, which I have <laughs> discovered doesn't include uh, uh, Irish dancing, um, no, please, please, awesome. please make a request. We've had crackle effects so far and a few other suggestions. So for next Saturday night, we're trying to get a bit of a feel. So get your request in tonight and on Wednesday um, um, of what Wayne might do for you. Make it hard. Not really got a closed end the way it normally has on a Wednesday night, so let's go for it. What would you like to see him do? I know. I'd like to see you do an entire show doing an impression of Les Dawson. <laughs> For my territory, that, isn't it? <laughs> yes, we've... We've, we've been privy to that earlier on, Doy. Yes, I think we could, or, or, could definitely um, fill that slot. Or we, you know, do an entire bowl while sounding like Gunnar Milligan. <laughs> there so far, you go. Right. Um, There's for those, of, for those of you that were in last Saturday and saw me cook up the um, the bowl in a bowl that I was doing last Saturday, that went on the fire, by the way. Um, my premiere tomorrow night at um, 6.45pm uh, UK time is going to be a video of a ball in a ball. Cool. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Wally Pye says he'd like a demo of you running through your sharpening process. Okay, fine. Um, cool. I'll maybe do that in a couple of weeks. Um, um, because I'm I am going to do the crackle effect next Saturday. So in a couple of weeks' time, um, if somebody can write that down to remind us on, I've already got done that. In a couple of weeks' time, I'll get the camera set up for the the pro edge and show you how I go through my sharpening process. Okay, so we've had uh, Ben Jamming join the chat, uh, Jimmy Shed, and Ian the Monkey Hanger Turner. Hello, Ian. Hi guys. Hello guys. Hey you guys. Hey, I watched that last night. Did you? Hey. Oh, I, did. I did. I was. I was actually watching it while we were in the chat. I think. <laughs> hey, you guys! Brilliant movie. Absolutely brilliant. Genius. Decidedly, he's fantastic. But nonetheless, awesome. Now, I'm just sanding the bottom of this bowl to 240 uh, because it's not getting coloured. It's just the top that's getting coloured. So I'm sanding it to 240, and then I'll be using a sand and sealer and Yorkshire grit on the bottom. I might need well, a Darren would like you to turn a pair of drumsticks. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, if you want to see somebody turn a pair of drumsticks... Go over uh, onto Chris Fisher, the Blind Wood Turners channel, because I'm sure he did a video of doing a pair of drumsticks. Uh, See, I could, just turn, I, I, I could just turn them thicker and call it a spurtle. 
Mm. Spurgle. <clears throat> could take the harmonicas like out, and we could have a soundtrack. <laughs> As part of the um, part of next week's, we're doing wee stuff for craft fairs because um, Saturday night is probably going to go on for longer than an hour. Uh, it's not going to be my usual sort of Wednesday night and Friday lunchtime. Saturday night is probably going to go on for longer than an hour. So as part of the, the craft fair items, I could do a spurtle as well. They tend to sell very well, especially in Scotland. I have, to, I have to apologise, Peter. I missed your suggestion. Could you repeat it, please, sir? Oh, drop that. Desperately scrolling back, trying to find out what it was, sir. How about a yarn bowl, he says. Yarn bowl. Okay, uh, somebody write that down. We'll get that sorted for right. some time in the future. Did you say you're taking notes, Doy? I've got it. Good lad. He's got. A, he's definitely. He's definitely got the glasses for it. <laughs> <laughs> Very much a Mister Magoo. Joe Senior's joined the chat. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. So what I used there was um, chestnut products, cellulose, spray on sand and sailor. I Good like regret. using it. It's uh, and now I'm doing. Sorry. Now I'm doing oh. Yorkshire grit. Um, there's a whole Pavarotti on this one. Oh, come so, on. Come on. Come on. No Pavarotti. I, I don't think I can do Pavarotti on it. Or oh. Yeah. Sand and sailor. Yeah. Right. I but, use the spray on cellulose. I also use the spray on acrylic because it tends to dry very, very quick. It gives a nice, even coat and it dries quick. And usually with sand and sailor, what, you, what you've got to do is wait till it dries, then knock it back with a piece of the, um, I keep on calling it web racks, web racks, I'm sure that's the wrong term, with no, a, yeah. a piece of that stuff. Oh, night no, no, web, yeah. Web brand, this is a, brand name. This, this is um, the orange coloured one from Chestnut, and this is the equivalent to about 1200 grit. So you'd knock the sand and sailor back with that. But as I'm using Yorkshire grit, which is an oh. abrasive paste, you don't have to do that. Because yeah, the abrasive paste does it. Go on then, Shug. Let's have the Pivarotti. <laughs> man, man. Um, I'm going to go with... Now hands that feel pity can feel soft as your face. With light brown, you're chagritty. Oh, I can't very do Dean Martin. I can't very do Dean Martin. Martin. <laughs> Cheers, <Yep>. mate. <laughs> I can't do the Pivarotti on that one. <laughs> right, so... I um, um, initially got the speed down to 250 to start using the Yorkshire grit. And I'm using the same piece of paper that I actually applied it with when the lathe was stationary. Uh, a couple more suggestions have come in. Two or three minutes. Yeah, go on. Uh, one for your take on a, a turned jack-o'-lantern uh, from Mike Lang. And Dewey Shed has said, what about a demo on airbrush colouring techniques? Yeah, I can do that. No problem whatsoever doing that. Right. Um, I, I take it the jack o' lantern's got something to do with Halloween, hasn't it? Yes, it does. Right, it's basically a, it's a pumpkin that you're familiar with, more or less. A classic, the classic Halloween pumpkin in many respects. See, when I was a kid and it was Halloween, we didn't have pumpkins over here. We had to use bloody turnips or swedes, whichever you want to call it. I was sitting here waiting for a, a different story there. I may have to invent one. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, when Wayne was a kid at Halloween, surely they were still burning witches. When Wayne was a kid at Halloween, they were still building Stonehenge. <laughs> yeah. And he was the foreman. He's going, he's going, you know what I need? I need to, I need some level training in this. Where's Matt? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Matt. He won't I'll be born you. for another 2,000 years. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was the foreman. The, 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 the designer came in and said, that lumber stone's got to, got to go up there. I said, you're jerking, man. 
He says, uh, so what, <laughs> no, no, I'm what you that. do with the Yorkshire grit, what you do with the Yorkshire grit, you keep on rubbing it in, you can turn the speed up, keep on rubbing it in until you get, it's all worked in and you don't get any residue on the tissue paper and I'm just about there. I think I need to build there we are. an outdoor cinema for Halloween and play the Nightmare Before Christmas. For the, for my <laughs> Excellent. Um, Lewis, uh, the Klondike craftsman, has joined, and so has uh, Paddy Bean. Good evening, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot for coming along. Really appreciate it. <laughs> and you have a question. Question from Jimmy Shed. What wood yeah. is that and the size, please? Right, it's around about 11 inch by one and a half inch, and it is ash. That's the one. Now, the only thing about using ash for colouring, either whether you're using stains or paints, because I'm using paints tonight, spray paints I'm using tonight, the only thing with using ash is that the grain will still show through the paint because ash is an open-grained wood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes adds to the effect, sometimes doesn't. One of the best woods is um, sycamore, if you're doing any sort of colouring. Or even beach. I suppose it's if fairly you... close grained, and it's quite plain. Although the sycamore I've got at the moment is ridiculously figured. If you really wanted to lose the grain, could you just build up a few layers of? Um, oh yeah, yeah, you could. A ceiling. But, I mean, it, 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 it's still. You could put more uh, more layers on. Or build it up, but you'll still see as how it's ash, you're still going to have some of the grain shown through Popping because through, of the yeah. different because of the difference of the the hard and the, the soft that's in there. Um, got a question from Rex B. What yeah. about a lesson on Master Wayne's top 10 tips on turning? Top 10 tips, oh, I'd have to think about then. I think, uh, I think half, half the year, uh, the issue there is. <clears throat> just about every session we get, you know, a good tip from Wayne at least. So whether you can pack them all and condense them all into you one, could. Or, or mean, be a bit could. Of time. he could, he could, if dark matter was here, just put his fingers out and dark matter would declare the tips of all of his fingers. <laughs> to be <it. laughs> This is actually got an absolutely beautiful piece of green running in the opposite direction there. As you can see, the green is running across this. Mm. I don't know if, you, mm. if that's actually. Yeah, you can pick it out. Yeah, you there. can see that, mate. Yeah, that's a fold in the tree. Yeah, it could be, or it could be where it's been On a bit wind blown. Yep. Uh, John Mooney has joined the chat. Hiya, John. Hiya, John. Welcome. <laughs> and Andy's, Andy's in, in. Oh, yeah, with the question. <laughs> <laughs> Where's yourself, Wayne? <laughs> um, um, my current employer uh, intimated at a werewolf invasion to take place, weirdly and slightly specifically, Lanarkshire. I will be staying in a caravan. Any good tips on werewolf survival? Dog treats, mate. <laughs> yeah. Plenty of dog treats. Well, you, <laughs> you either, you, like Neil says, you either need dog treats or you need. <laughs> You definitely need a Brin. Dog soldiers. A, a, brin, a brin or a Kasha. That's what you need. Mm. <laughs> Pop in to see the Beard beard 16 on the way back, the way up, mate, and ask him to, before you do that, message him and ask you to make a range of, of silver-coated uh, uh, knives and other implements <laughs> I feel would be appropriate. Little yeah. silver coated tips for one of the cockerel spurs and then take that up as a guard rooster. <laughs> no, seriously, they're vicious. Oh, I, think, I, know, I, mate. I, I mean. think I think what we need to do is get Andy a copy of um, Woodhouse's um, guide to making. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. Oh Barbara. Uh, <laughs> oh excellent. And <laughs> Train your dog of the Woodhouse way. Can anyone imagine the action I did with my hand as I said that? Yeah. <laughs> yes. The the, uh, the upturned palm and then the up to the face. Ah, exactly. The walkies. 
Although I've, I've got a friend that's actually got a degree in K9 psychology, and apparently the high pitched voice thing is uh, is useful when you're trying to get him to t- t- pay attention. Yeah, I find I find saying saying oi. Yeah, Jesus, the tip mate works just as well. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. stop and stay have proven to be quite, you know, proven to be quite good. The final one is, will you shut the... Um... Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Caesar, <laughs> for all your appetite too. dogs, and maybe yeah. they'll shut the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. However, putting trains on TV, on YouTube, works very well, too. He becomes yeah, completely well. distracted and... And, uh, I don't know if you can see on there. We've got a, we've got a load of very light wood here and a load of very dark wood here. That over there is the sap wood, and this over here is the hard wood. Mm-hmm. Cool. Right, so I'm going to sand this, and with this one, I'm going to be sanding to 400 uh, because it's going to get paint. Now, some people have said, and not just to be to me, but to other turners as well. You're only painting that uh, to hide your mistakes. Actually, if you don't get the surface right for putting paint on, all your mistakes will stand out. 100%. Um, Copper Owl Wood Turning is joined as well. Hiya. Right. Folks, remember, please, please, please hit that thumbs up if you like what Wayne's doing. And if you're new to the channel and you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button and give that notification bell a bit of a ring. Remember, by liking Wayne's video, you're also making sure that your feed will show more wood turning videos to you. Um, at the top of the chat, you'll find a link to Wayne's wine-flavored coffee, Buy Me A Coffee link. The Buy Me A Coffee link will take you to a site that allows you to treat the man to a coffee for all the hard work he puts into to give us these demos. Um, three times a week at the moment, so go on, back the man of coffee. Um, you have 86 beautiful, beautiful human beings watching this, ch- watching you Excellent. tonight. And me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful uh, human beings watching you, and a die prout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to agree with Ruby on this. It's almost too pretty to paint. If I thought it, it was going to be Ruby, anything... You, you, you're right there. It is almost too pity to, pr- too yeah. pity to paint. If I thought it was going to be anything other than, you know, a, a, a pretty picture afterwards, I would say don't, but it will be nice afterwards. A couple of people commenting on a few, a, a, a couple of a couple of inverted thumbs ups and we've got in there. I just want to make sure everyone understands when you press the like button inside a YouTube channel, what you're doing is you are telling YouTube that you as an individual like this kind of content. If you push the other button, the thumbs down button, what you're doing is you're telling YouTube you don't like this content. So what you're really doing is you're just affecting your own viewpoint. If you're a subscriber and you're pushing that, then you're being mad. So please, if you like, if you like Wayne's content, hit that thumbs up. Because um, what you're doing is you're saying you're telling that you're telling that YouTube algorithm you like this material, um, and that you also like this other material for coming from other sources. So please hit that thumbs up. It does everybody in the community a lot of good. Right, I'm finishing off now with 400. Give that a brush out. Where'd I put Brushy? Oh, there he is. Brushy! Hey. Andy H is in as well. Brushy! Hi, hey, Andy. And I'm just going to give this a wipe over with some, I was going to say methylated spirits there, but I'll put it down somewhere and I can't see it. You mean? Give it a lick. Ooh, it tastes just like raisins. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have an awesome 50 thumbs up, sir, and 83 beautiful human beings watching um, the channel right now. One of them's Wendy. I'm going to say, Wendy's joined the channel. Hi, Wendy. Wendy. Back to animal accents and animal voices. <laughs> What's Clive's voice? Clive's voice? 
Clive's, Clive, Clive sounds like Ringo Starr reading Thomas the Tank Engine in my head. Uh, <laughs> you see, I was wondering with his passion for trains whether he might sound a little bit like Fred Dibner. Could be, but I think it's more as more Ringo Starr yeah. reading Thomas the Tank. That's yeah. what he sounds like in my head. Unfortunately, my GP has exactly that that accent. So Does it? whenever he's speaking to me, all I'm getting is in the back of my head. Sorry, what was that, Doctor? <laughs> it's when he slips up and calls you Thomas, you know he's getting you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well. I've not got anything at what, what on me, Thomas. Yeah, what? So, <laughs> Wood Punning by Barry's joined the channel. Dory Sexy's just joined, and so has David Nickel. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Can't oh, find oh. That looks oh, really anywhere. nice. You know what? Oh. I mean, every time we look at this, it just yeah. looks really nice. Once you pop, you can't stop. It's a shame it's going to get coloured. Such is life. However, oh, look, however, the bloody mist is sitting there right in front of us. I tell you, man. I tell you. Yeah. However, Kirk. we should be grateful that with the right, depending how you choose to do the water drop, Wayne, we're going to get quite a lot of detail in the actual bowl of this. It's still going to be you're quite going a to get the, the bowl is going to be starting about there. So you're going to get a little bit of the sapwood and. Yeah. Um, a lot of the heartwood that's actually going into the bowl anyway. Yeah. Um, shame about that no. gorgeous bit of grey near the rim. <laughs> yeah, but you well, sorry. To... I'm just. I'm Light. sorry. I've got, I've got a wood issue, aren't I, really? <laughs> Aaron J. Yeah, is telling I usually us. use. I usually use sycamore for doing this, but I'm actually keeping the sycamore I've got because I've got a, a live demo at our wood turning club in November, and I'm not wanting to use that because. It's highly figured and it's going to stain really, really well. Darren Jay's telling us that he's not nuts. The multiple voices in his head keep telling him so that he's completely sane. <laughs> yeah, don't argue with him, Darren. When they start disagreeing with each other, though. Yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't pick a fight with him. Anyway, Doy, back to this wood issue. Are you sure it's not a rim issue? Because you said near the rim. Oh dear! Here we go. I can hear, I can hear this one coming. Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like having Benjamin in the room live. <laughs> I've not had any problems with tear out near the rim. Oh, leave that! Leave that! When it's and hangers, when it's and hangers. Yeah, but but. But I've had an awkward bottom recently that's uh, oh, hey. ta taking an extra little bit of attention to get smooth. <laughs> Left a bit. Oh, from your point of view, right a bit. Right, let's move that that way. Uh, Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good, mate. Grand. Right, so on this one, what you need when you're doing a water drop bowl is three paints. You need a light and dark of one color and a white so we are going to start off with where am i sky blue now i just get, I, I get my paints just from um over here it's it's halfords which is an auto shop and uh, dale gets his from graf city uh, graf yeah city. graf city yeah, but I buy, I tend to buy, well, it actually depends for the guys. I, mean, I buy a lot of Cobra, low pressure. Um, and there's a few other brands in their mix which are quite low cost right now that are awesome. <coughs> All right, let's see how this goes on. And again, when I'm doing paint, I always start outside the edge and then come across and finish outside the edge. Yeah. It tends to stop you getting a thick piece at the the uh, start and the end, doesn't it? I've rejoined this part of the conversation. I was reading the chat. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then what I do is turn it 90 degrees and then do the same thing again.
and you can actually see where the grain is sticking through. Right, to get the water drop, wrong way, take that that way. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. It's looking good, man. Remind me to bring down a spare camera when I come down. I've got 4K you can borrow. Grand. Right. To do the water drop, what you need is one of the the water scoosher things. How'd it go? A what? Water scoosher. A water scoosher. Yeah. One of these things, you know, that that, you, that goes yeah, into yeah. a ah, square. Yeah. No, I've, I've got I've got the scusher, but I can't find the bloody bottle. Oh, <laughs> oh it's um, so, so I've, got, I've, got I've got the jar. I've got, so, I've got a jar there, of water. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's over next to the uh, it's over next to the uh, um, um, and denatured alcohol. Okay, um, it doesn't Labeled really in case matter. of emergency. When you're doing this, it doesn't matter if the paint is wet or dry. I've tried it both ways, and it doesn't really matter if the paint is wet or dry. So I'm just going to get some small bubbles on there first. Uh, Wayne Ruby's asked, yeah. is it acrylic or oil based? Uh, this is a. Um, uh, it's not oil based. I'm pretty certain on that. It'll be water. It'll be water based in principle, but the actual, the actual carrier for that paint is likely to be acrylic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's coming out, if it's coming out of Halfords, it'll probably be ac acrylic. Uh, I'm sorry if I uh, if I murder this one, but a Bakken Tiff Tick has uh, entered the chat. Hello. I I I I love that name. Yeah, but I can't. Um, Mike Lang has a question. He he he's asked: Does lip thickness affect your spray pattern, Wayne? Well, it depends, Mike. If he's been to, he's been and had the operation. <laughs> <laughs> Not what, really. What, well, Wayne? Have you got? Have you got to do but this? There's then? a load. There's a load of small bubbles on there, so I'll get Who's rid of that? the. I'll get rid of the scud. But what I'm going to do now is just drop some water on with my fingers to get some bigger bubbles. This is obviously very random. Now, the other thing about this, now I've been doing this um, technique for, oh, I don't know, four or five years probably. It's not new, this technique. And it wasn't started by wood turners either. This technique has been around at least since the 70s. People used to do motorbike petrol tanks with it and different other parts of motorbikes they used to do with it. I've seen people do computers uh, using this technique. I've seen them, or computer cases, I should say. I've seen them do um, um, coffee cups, mugs, things like this. I did a, um, a vase. Um, a couple of years ago, using this technique. Uh, uh, John, that, that was, go John from Jigsies has got to go, Wayne, so he's just saying he'll catch you later. Well, yeah, See you, John. Thanks you, for John. coming in. Sorry about that, mate. Um, so, yeah, it can be done on anything. It can be done on something that is more 3D than flat. Uh, I just happened to be sitting in the house one day, looking out the window, and it was raining, and... The raindrops were actually sticking to the window. They weren't rolling down. I thought, well, you know, if raindrops do that, um, see them on car windscreens and car bodywork, if they do that on there and stick, why can't it be done on a VAR? So I did. I did it on the VAR. I think I wanted some more bigger drops. You, on should, there you should do this to your workshop PC. Yeah, I should, <laughs> shouldn't I? Uh. A couple of faces popped in. I think we had uh, Bailey Woodworks popped in. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Bailey. You have a wonderful, yeah, beautiful, beautiful 91 people watching. Um, Excellent. Right, now, this technique, well, I'll put it on a different camera so you can see what I'm actually doing. What you do now, let's turn that around so I've got the the green running that way i just like it like that <coughs> what you do now with the the darker blue 
is that you actually spray it very flat across the piece so it's only tending to hit one side of the bubble okay i hope i've got enough paint in this can for doing this folks as we get towards the 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 final the final parts of this why not reach why not share this video out so that other folks can pop in and see how this technique wraps up what i do now i mean i've got another lathe sitting in front of this one what i'd usually do is go around the other side and spray from the other side i've turned it 180 degrees and now what i'm going to do right i've explained about it being flat what i'm going to do now is with the white i'm going to go in from the other side the same very very flat so it just hits the other side of the bubble and that actually gives it the shadow effect all ah, right Mark Strotton's in, says, good evening, Wayne, Dale, Huey, and everyone. Hi, I'm Good evening. Hey, Mark. If you're not happy with uh, what you've done, turn the background and stick the blue on again. Because I've got that particularly white over there. And there we are. So that's the water drop effect. Now, what you've got to do now is put that aside for 24 hours, or if it's in a warm house or something, you'll probably get away with a, a few hours, depending on the warmth of the house. What happens is, is all the water evaporates, and the whole piece goes flat. <laughs> you can get some of the bubbles, as, as the water is evaporating, you can get some of the bubbles starting to crack. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. That doesn't matter, because once you put the lacquer on, it actually closes up all the cracks. So I'm going to put this to one side because that's, this is going to be used as a blue Peter piece in the demo I'm doing in November. Uh, Wayne? Yeah? It's, we've, we've just proved just exactly how powerful you've become because uh, Todd at Glen Cove Woodworks has said, that's absolutely amazing. Wayne throws down some water and it thunders here in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I have the power. <laughs> right. So this one. And the bloody um, rain god. <laughs> this one I've done in a different colour. So I've done this Why? one in pinks. Or shades of red, let's see. Cool. Yeah, I like that. So Folks, what I'm going like to do with this one, doing get some... that thumbs up. Sorry, mate. After you. <laughs> If you like what Wayne's doing, folks, remember, hit that thumbs up. If you're fresh to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and give that notification bell a bit of a ring. If you really like what Wayne's doing, at the top of the chat, you'll find a link to his Buy Me A Coffee to say thank you. Wayne puts on puts these demos on three times a week, charges nothing, and wears all the costs himself. So the least we can do is buy him a coffee to say thank you. Right, what I'll do, I'll turn this out. Um... In the bottom of the bowl, would anybody... Well, let's turn the bowl out first, then I'll ask. Wayne Zeus Clasper says Martin at Woody's cre uh, Creations. <laughs> <laughs> you, should hear him, you should hear him after a Hawaiian pizza. That's not far from the truth. <laughs> By Zeus, that was a big one. <laughs> Turn the speed up on that. That's better. So I want to know if Mark's out working tonight or whether he's on his way home with another Chinese or chippy supper for, for Jenna. <laughs> That's what I want to know. I want to, I want to eat vicariously through others. 
Well, I <laughs> that's got, my new diet. I got a ch- I got a fourteen inch chicken tikka pizza and Scottish pakora. Um, um, is what I had for dinner. Washed now this one's actually made original. out of elm. It's not made out of ash. Well, there's a question, Wayne. We're thinking and planning some yew trees. All right. We're just wondering, you know, from our perspective, of what what else we might want to put in to put in some diversity. Right. Uh, have you, have you got birch, anywhere? Have, beach, you got anywhere have you decided on anywhere on the property where you might want a hedge? Uh, down mm-hmm. towards one of the gates, you know, where right. you would be thinking, what we think of as the 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 left hand gate. Because I'd be thinking of a yew hedge. That's that kind of where I think. Nice. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's where we'll go. I'll tell the boss. Just along, um, the next time you're down, remind us on, just mm. along the road from here, uh, there's a guy who's got a, a, an absolutely beautiful yew hedge, mm. which has been there for years. We shall have a look. There may be some eucalyptus trees in our future, too. Ooh, a beautiful snake bot. They get very big very quick and they're uh, they can cut them they down very in... quick. Similarly, yes. Um if you do pollard them You want me to can... pollard them? Is that like some kind yeah. of perversion <laughs> that you have to do then? <laughs> it, uh, Bill, you're totally right. It is a total perversion. That's what pollarding is. Pollard a total and utter perversion. Perversion, yeah, right Good right Lord. at the stem. <laughs> Uh, Darren, to answer your question, uh, it's the Sunday, the thirty-first of October. <clears throat> or is that Sue Pollarding you're thinking of there? That's a perversion. Oh, that could be a perversion indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah filthy uh, so and so. Yes, hi campers. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh, I've got a bit more on that. Yeah, Bertha West is asking Scottish what? And Andy H is answering Scottish Pakora. And Dewey Shed has asked, uh, question, question, what height is the tool rest? Uh, what height is you... the tool rest? It's just below centre. What's happening is when, when I come round, I, I don't know, I'm, I'll see if I can show you while I'm turning. I When I'm uh, turning the inside of a bowl, I actually, the, the, what's called, I, I describe an arc when I'm turning mm-hmm. the inside of a bowl. So what I do is I start off probably around about centre height. And as I'm going in, the tool goes up above centre. I can't do it very well. But let's see if I can shorten this handle. So the tool goes up above centre. like that, and then comes back down and finishes right on centre height. So you get rid of that little nubbity nub right in the middle. That's the one. Okay. It means that you're actually presenting the edge exactly the same all the way through the arc Yeah. to the surface of the wood. So I go up, and then I come back down towards the centre when I'm turning the inside of a bowl. Right. Um, this is elm, you can tell it's elm because of the colour and everything. I can actually tell because of the smell. Some mm. elms you, you get absolutely stink. Um, in the bottom, let's have a, a view from the chat. Leave it plain or stick um, some gold leaf in the centre. Run around now. <laughs> uh, Stuart's asked a question. Uh, yeah. Question, question, genuine question. Why is pollarding bad? Right. Have you uh, ever seen pollarding done? Basically, what you get is now this is usually done on trees in the street that are controlled by the council and thing and things. You get the stem coming up of the tree, then it starts branching off, and rather than letting the branches grow and grow and grow, they cut off all of the branches at the top. So you end up with this very nice stem of a tree with these little twigs coming out the top. 
It just looks mm. absolutely bloody awful. Yeah. Well, it can be useful to just bring a tree. Basically, it's cutting a tree back down virtually to its stem. Um, and with certain varieties, that's all right. Your, your willow, sycamore, things like that, that will regrow substantial yeah. limbs, not a problem. But with things like eucalyptus, that particularly snake bark, that's so fast growing, it'll put out very tall, weak limbs from that pollard if it's a, an already substantial tree. Um, and I've seen them just break out. Take them out and keep them separated. Hey. At the moment, we are eight <laughs> gold separated. and six plain. Uh, Ruby said, "No gold. Put a line near the outside of the bowl and near to the hollow." Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably put a couple of highlights on this, Ruby. Thank you for that. Oh, right. I don't think leave it plain. If it's me, I would leave right, it plain. Okay. Mm. We're going for plain. What I'll do no, before yeah. I do There's a lot of people problem. asking. There's a lot of people suggesting to, to be careful. From my perspective, I'm adding a vote to the plain camp. From what I've seen, it's it's a neck and neck, but gold it's, it's is It's a roundabout neck and neck. I'm going to go for the plain. Yeah. I'm just going to do a couple of small highlights. And says, Ruby, if you're coming over, pay me, please. I'm on Phillip Island, Victoria. If you get down this way, always a bed here for you. You have a studio upstairs with an ensuite. It's very kind. Whatever you do, Darren, don't put that address in the chat, or we'll all be over there. Ages <laughs> <laughs> since I've been to Victoria. Uh, and Benjamin said he was thinking of Vicky Pollard. Go. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm above a bow. Bothered. <laughs> bothered. My I'm bothered. bothered. <laughs> Face bothered. <coughs> right, just get this quickly sanded out. If it wasn't for your drilly, where would you be? Right, for those of you who voted for gold leaf, what I'll do next weekend when I do the, the crackle effect paint, I'll put gold leaf in the, the centre of that one. When you're at 20, you're at 20, 52. You have 88 beautiful people watching with 66 thumbs up. Excellent. What's Stunning. Leave that on the floor. Can't fall any further then. As it's spinning there, that colour, it's reminded me of the Elvis 40 Greatest Hits on Pink Vinyl. <laughs> I don't know why. Just taking me there. Uh, can, I, yeah. can, I, can, I, can I confirm that you went to the, the devil Doctor Who from the 70s? <laughs> no. um, can I just confirm that? You, you, time isn't linear. Yeah, good. <laughs> There's a right, fantastic story. Oh, yeah, at least you center. don't have to experience it in a linear fashion. Sorry, Wayne, please. <laughs> and I was just putting sand and sealer in the centre. Wipe off the excess. No need to use the Nyweb or whatever it's called now because I am going to be using Yorkshire Grit again. There's a fantastic time-travelling bus story by Terry Pratchett. And some of his short stories collections that has now reminded me so much of you, Di. You know, <laughs> oh dear, I think it's the number nine to, to Blackburn or something like that. <laughs> Turn the speed down again. It's obviously well received. Wayne Anthony Milner's put uh, four thumbs up. Uh, Abacan's put oh God knows how many and a load of clapped hands as well. Happy days. Uh, now what I should have done because I was going to lacquer the outside of this. I probably will still be able to lacquer the outside of this because obviously lacquer won't stick over the top of wax very well. Uh, although. Um, I've seen some people do that. Question from Christine and Michael. Wayne, are you going to darken yep. the dividing lines? 
they will probably get darkened once I put the lacquer on. Yeah. Christine. Steve, Chris and Michael. Christine and Michael. My apologies. Yes. Dan J says the cooker kookaburras are calling. As opposed to the cooker. Must be morning then. Folks, if you ever, if when you get a chance to look at where Dai has his computer, there's a ceiling that's quite close to his head. Every now and again, he will hit that ceiling and then goes off into his own little world. We, we may have witnessed that. I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the lacquer on as the lathe is spinning. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it in this direction. So hopefully it just hits uh, the, the, the rim where the colour is. We shall see. Yeah, that's looking not too shabby. Not too shabby. I'm not a massive fan of, of, of pinky type colours normally, but I actually like, when you showed me this earlier on, I actually like the colour. I like it even more now it's against that wood. That looks crap. Mm, yeah. I don't know you like it the, even the, more the, when it's... Sorry. The, <laughs> the, the, the first time I did the, the pink, it was actually, it was a commission for a 60th birthday present. I, I have got photos on my we in the Wood Turner Facebook page on that one. Uh, which I, I think don't... was 15 inch, 15 oh. inch sycamore, I think. And that mm. had gold leaf in the centre. I don't normally like tomatoes, John, but this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Wayne, Wayne right. quick question yeah. from Woolly Pie. Uh, yeah. Do you think this bubble effect would scale down onto a smaller piece? Or oh, just yes. Not look right? Yeah, you, the, the thing is, is that you can do, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be on a ball with a flat rim. You can do it on other things. You've got to be patient, and especially if you're doing something uh, like a vase, you've got to be patient and try not to get the uh, the water to run as you slowly turn it to put the paint on. But you could do it on boxes, you could do it on vases, Um you could probably do it on. Oh, I don't see what, why you'd do it on the bottom of a ball because nobody would see it. But uh, you could actually do it again if you're careful. You could actually do it on the inside of a ball rather than the the rim. But again, it's just uh, figuring out how to how to do the paint. It can be done. I'm fairly certain it can be done. Yeah, I would think so. The wood does in late as usual. Go and stand in the corner, Steve. Hi, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren saying he can spy Drilly's tailless cousins over in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. Andy H um, is returning, says his battery's going, so he'll have to catch you later. See you soon. Oh. Right, it's coming up five to nine. Um, you want us to carry on do something else or what? Ah, if, go on. If you've got something you can do, Wayne, you chuck it on that later. Let's see. I was just wondering whether I should. Um, I know Darren asked for the um, craft fair things. Um, I was just wondering if I should do a main project and just shove craft fair things in. Mm. There you go. Oh, it. yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I like that a lot. Well done, mate. So that's the water. I'll go, go and put this to one side. It will get more coats of lacquer. Uh, I might mm. even see if the lacquer will go over the wax once all the solvents have evaporated out of it. It's, it's a technique I want to try on flat work, that. Well, it certainly work on flat work. Mm. I'm seeing a, a nice little bathroom cabinet. Have I got any interesting bits of wood here? Most of my interesting bits of wood are actually in the... Of the shed. Any bit of wood in my shed's interesting, Wayne. It's just that you can't get to it at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, this is a brief intermission. Wayne, you may want to change your camera position. Get your off screens here. The girl from Ipanema is lovely. camera position has obviously been adjusted with a view to doing the water drop. Yeah, I'll change it back. Slightly twiddled. Fiddled. It's slightly twiddled with the flat underside. Oh, hello, Vic. <laughs> What's in the end of the stick, Vic? <laughs> 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 Don't you come Wrong back bit. no more, no more, no more. It's me pride, Bob. See, now I think is a merch line. Uh, Wayne could get a good line going in uh, Crocs. Mm. Oh, definitely. Oh, I think you could get a good line Safety going. Crocs. Crocs. Safety, Safety Crocs. Crocs. Yeah. Steel toe cup Crocs. I've looked for them, Shug. You can't get them. <laughs> no, but there's, there is a bloke who did some on YouTube, mate. I can't remember who it was now, but somebody sent me a link one day and I was absolutely killing myself. Like, I think it was you. I think it was me. I think I sent you the link. Yeah, it probably was. I just remember laughing my head off at it. Oh, it was so funny. I think the marketing play really is as uh, so sawdust redistribution device. Whose teeth have I got it? Sawdust redistribution <laughs> devices. Yeah. Mother, mother, have you got me teeth? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got Grand's teeth in again. <laughs> Good old Buster. Cheers for dropping by, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Buster. Hey, Ron Brown's got to pop out too. And George W. Jones. Uh, and Peter That's Corker is saying that he just looked at your pink water drop bowl with gold leaf centre. It's absolutely stunning, Wayne. And he wishes he voted the gold leaf now. <laughs> <laughs> too late, too late. <laughs> Darren's got a point there. I used to have a pair of steel toe cap muck boots that eventually got cut down. Uh, the wood dude says... He, uh, he made steel toe cap crocs, uh, and Stuart Farini told you you can really get them. Oh, wow. right. I've never, be, I've never been able to find them. That's mad. I, I, I need I, to look I now. Think, I think you can get um, steel toe cap sort of clog type things, but they're not crocs. Alexa, can you get <laughs> steel toe capped crocs? <laughs> Alexa's just ordered uh, three grocers <laughs> of cardboard box. She says, she says she couldn't find any, but she could, she could find a bunch of a bunch of options, but none of them are still talk out cross. She's still wh muttering along here, telling me she's <laughs> still talk out wellies in my in my uh, basket. That's what Darren said. He said, you can buy steel toe cap rubber gum boots, then cut them down. Yeah, Actually, yeah. that's that's quite a good idea. <clears throat> Legs is quite mad. I have a dreadful feeling I'm supposed to do something tomorrow, but I can't think what it is. <clears throat> Being as it's Sunday, it might be take Mrs. Kirkwood out to go and get a lovely Sunday dinner. No, no, no. He'll, be going, he'll be going across to the bigger for his fish and chips tomorrow. Damn, bigger, damn, Tutton. Get won't get lost this time on the way back. 
Yeah. Fit, fit the werewolf noises to to Andy's <laughs> caravan. Was that one of the uh, one of the? No. Sorry, did I say that? Now you've said it. Small, joke, <laughs> small paddle that makes scratching noises against the sail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not usually one of these people that does a lot of kit type things. But certainly a good seller at craft fairs is a key ring. So let's get one of these out. Uh oh, uh oh, Dale. Uh, Andy's, uh, Andy's heard that. He knows now. We've given the game away. Damn it. Go. <laughs> Go! <laughs> what I'll do first is just. See if I can trim this off with a skew chisel or even the parting tool. That's going to be a wee bit out of centre, but that's okay. I can easy centre it back up again. The wood dude's asking, do you have some time to do some piercing on that? Do I have some time to do some piercing? In general, are you talking about, Steve? <laughs> I think that's um, This is going just going to be a, a very quick... Um, the thing with piercing is, is that turning the actual ball, if I turn a small ball um, very, very thin, that, that's that's super quick. That's, that's not a problem. The problem is when it comes to the piercing, because it can't take that bloody long to get it all done. But I could see how we go on time one week and maybe see about doing that. Right, let's mark this. It's going to be too thick. The bloody hell's my pencil gone. You still have a beautiful 68 people watching and 73 thumbs up. Excellent. Folks, if you Thank haven't you already much, and you're fresh to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And even if you are, make sure that notification bell is rung. Um, remember, by hitting thumbs up, you're telling the YouTube algorithm you like this kind of content and will recommend this and more to you going forward. Down in the chat, or up in the chat, at the top of the chat, we found a link to Wayne's Buy Me a Flavoured Coffee, um, which is to say thank you for all the effort. Oh, wine flavoured, right? Yeah, all right. Wine flavored. Uh, <laughs> 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 which is to say thank you for uh, for all the efforts that he, he's, he puts in and he does these shows three times a week. Where's all the cost? You know, when he does it for our benefit kind of thing. So if you'd like to say thank you, please hit that. Go up, buy the man a coffee, and the world will be a happy place. Mostly Wayne will be a happy man. What kind of flavoured coffee do you like, Wayne? Merlot. Merlot, yeah. <laughs> Shiraz. Shiraz. A cheeky deep pan to wash it down. Cabernet oh, oh, Wash your mouth out, guy. Cabinet. A, a cabinet to wash it down. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah. A, cabinet. A, a cabinet is something you <laughs> That should be long enough. And he says he's currently bishop. dipping the tips of Luke's Nerf gun darts and his wife's silver jewellery. Well, <laughs> oh, well, it used to be. <laughs> He may be a, he may be taking this too far. Yeah. <laughs> Dog Soldiers was set in the Highlands to really. Mm. Yes, <laughs> but Tinto Hill is quite high and so is uh, and so is the Pentland Hill, so you know. It's not that high, it's not a Monroe, is it? No, it's not a Monroe. Actually, you know, now you've said that, I'm saying it's not a Monroe. It's not I don't think it is. I don't, I don't think, think it, it is. is. 
No, it's not. I got that the right size. Yeah, <laughs> Andy, you can never Here be too prepared. <clears throat> oh, the wood dude says uh, he's found another small bottle of whiskey. If you'd like it, Wayne. Oh, cheers, <laughs> Dave. Oh, I'm on. I'm on my way round. I'll see you in a minute, Wayne. <laughs> 711 uh, meters up, Wayne. It's how far? 711 meters to the to the highest elevation. Oh, it'll be close then. And Monroe's 3,000 feet, isn't it? Yeah, this is 2,333. All oh, right. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's how I always find my way home whenever I'm lost. Which works as long as you can see it, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> squeak. Oh, Darren says, while the silver is still molten, shoot it at a bowl. Great splatter effect. I just wonder how well that would work. Darren's clearly already got on the Fosters, mm. even though it's only 7 a.m. It's a bounce, Shug, really. <laughs> I, I have seen people do uh, molten aluminium with wood. Not on a bowl, but they've, they've actually put molten aluminium around a, a wooded piece, a live, live edge piece. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, it's not something I fancy doing. That's If you're going to pour... If you're going to pour, then you want some at low temp like pewter, really. Yeah, yeah. Which I so want to get was... hold of some. Oh, <laughs> but not for pouring. Oh, we'll be back to the Pearson again, Dolly. Well, hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I tell you what. I can't get Dye. my Pearson in anyway. Dye. Dye, yeah? Yeah. So you've got your Pearson, right? Do you have to sit down to whittle? <laughs> no man, uh, guess what? I think my glue's gone off. Doyle says he's got a Prince Albert, a Prince Charles, a Prince Henry. Which one? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh dear! I have a nasal septum piercing. <laughs> well, it's the That's first time I've been told that. <laughs> mm. Thin. It's healed up. Woolly Pie says uh, he tried bismuth in a piece and ruined his good turning slippers. <laughs> bismuth is a fantastic stuff if you get it. Martin Martin Saban Smith did some stuff with um, a bismuth in the in the centre of a ball. That turned out really really smart. That did. You have to do something with with bismuth. You know what I mean? In the early part of the last century. On a whim, that was Bismarck, wasn't it? Sorry, man. Uh, yeah. and there's, there's that Pepto Bismarck, which is like Pepto Bismol, but it goes down better. <laughs> oh, the no, you're, you're, you're talking about absinthe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm certainly not drinking it ever, 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 ever again. Yeah, but absinthe <laughs> makes the heart grow fonder, doesn't it? No, this is true, yeah. Absinthe is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lafay. Mm. Oh, hold on a minute. I had some absinthe. What did you say? What did you say? Re remind me to tell you my absinthe stories sometime. What? I've forgotten. I've had too much absinthe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you cut your ears off? I was just going to say, does all anyone want an ear? I've just found a severed one. And, 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 <laughs> all, I'm, all I'm using here now, what I've done, I've cut the, the blank down to size. It's got a brass tube going through there, which I think it's about a 7 mil brass tube. I've made the blank a little bit on the short side. That's not a problem. I'll just cut that brass tube off. I've, mm -hmm. This is a light pull driver for doing light pulls. Just slip that onto there. Bring the tail stock up. Light pulls. That's pull that a light in there. story. Get my skew chisel. Don't want that one. Where's my other one? Can't see it. Where's it going? 
Oh, Dolly, Rob's put there in the chat. I've just seen it, mate. I'm just replying now. Good stuff. But, yeah, but in fact, that's even easier than typing, isn't it? Uh, thanks, Rob. If you see a link or anything at any point, just fire it over to me on Facebook because um, I do need to get on and get some of that sorted. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I've rejoined the conversation here. So you're getting someone to send you some absinthe on, on Facebook. Is that <laughs> That's it, and and then Kylie's going to dress as the Green Fairy, and that'll lose me at least mm, two hours. Kylie, mm. <laughs> spinning around. Right, so all <laughs> I'm going to do me with that image for a is, moment. Is, I'm, I'm yeah. just going to do a fairly basic <laughs> shape on this. I'm going to take that light pole driver out because it doesn't seem to be driving that well. And what I'll put in is a dead center. Who's he? Nine millimeter. Oh. Don't worry about that. Can't go any further. One in, one out. That's what she said. Keep moving. <laughs> Uh, hang on, the TARDIS doesn't have a light pull drive. <laughs> I need some more glue in there, that's what's wrong. Darren, I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> Frightfully good, Chuck. <laughs> right. I've been... I've been practicing. I used to live next door to Torchwood HQ for a while. Oh, next door, hundred meters. That's near enough. It's a darn sight close. But put it this way, I can't see it from my house now. I bet told <laughs> John Watts his face could see from hundred meters in one there. step. <laughs> what? Well, every now and so again, you go on. Mumble, mumble. <laughs> so what's his name John what's his name I said I bet he could cover 100 metres in, in, in one mince the, uh, John Barryman that's the one thank you Barrymore's somewhat completely different yeah John yeah, different different man completely uh, Tom Tango Park so swimming pool hiya Tom yeah. hiya right, Tom. Tom good evening remember folks if you like what Wayne's doing well, when he is doing something right now, we just see the two. <laughs> we just see the two centers. You, you're, not, you're not like what he's doing at the moment. He's just, you're not like he's what, trying to make a done. point. What, what, is, what he's done at the moment is he's just stuck his bloody fingers together with CA glue. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you like what Wayne's doing, he's just done a runner. <laughs> How many fingers have you got? So, wait a minute, so we've gone down to nine, or is it eight best tips and two stuck together? Yeah. <laughs> and that's oh, Jamie at Starb on 30. Well, <laughs> uh, oh, really like a oh. bed, Mark. Well, that's a good noise. Hey, yeah, that's part of it. Okay, though. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Mate, I've got to go to North Carolina in the next few weeks. Oh, I thought it was Seattle you were going to. Sorry? I've got to go Seattle now. You were going to. all over the place. I've got to stop in and shot at Charlotte and then skip over. And apart from anything else, that movie was set in upstate New York. I realise that, but we're in we're near Boone, so that's whenever I think of whenever I think of the movie, I think of the Blue Red Parkway. That's kind of where that's where I think of it as being. How did you say the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia? No, Blue Ridge oh, Mountains. Yeah. Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Fantastic, Hold on. Fantastic NASCAR country. Really Which good folk. Do I have to play in that? <laughs> awesome. Awesome first. Shred was it a uh, shredded barbecue chicken? A delicacy of North Carolina. You've got to try it when you go. You get it with a biscuit, and it's an American biscuit, it's not a, it's not a, right. a, a UK biscuit. So it's basically a so scone. So it's, it's scone, basically, but more savoury. It, it makes no difference. It tastes great. Well, when I'm there, now you I see it. Chris. Now it's gone. Hey. <laughs> 
it's one of those great things about it. it's one of those great things whenever I get a chance to go to the US. The other thing is America's giant contribution, giant contribution to to the world of driving, which doesn't work over here, which is turn right on red. I just think that's genius. Mm, you know. Oh, Jesse's saying you'll be in my neck of the woods, east of NC. Really, sir? Then if I'm going to be loitering around in that part of the world, I'll reach out. Who knows? We might be able to catch up. Night, Wendy. Wendy's on her way. Jane's friend, uh, V, is off to North Carolina in November. Cool. I used to spend a lot of time in Smithfield, Chesky, and Raleigh, Durham. Um, she's um, her daughter works across there is a, a teacher, I believe. You know, so many jokes. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, not one day. <clears throat> Let me try and look up one of my mates when I go over to. He's still over there. Right, I'm just going to stick a bit of wax on this. I'll not bother sealing it or anything. I think we've probably gone on a bit too long, so I'll stick a bit of wax on. Just a quick show. Now, obviously, if you were doing these for craft fairs, what you'd do is all your prep beforehand, so you'd get all your blanks cut to size, all the holes drilled, all the brass tubes uh, put in, and then you'd do all of the turning. And you can get brass tubes that are longer than these ones. I think longer ones actually look better, to tell you the truth. So I'll just stick this together. Put that back up there. Stick that in there. And that one in there. I haven't got a camera over here at the vice, but I'm just... Squeezing the two bits in here. See, now, if I'd have known about that trick before, I could have made my kids some winning conkers there. There you go. <laughs> okay, you, can you can take the boy out of Coventry, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> right, change the camera over. And there you are. Lovely. One oh, small yeah. key ring. These okay. sell these sell for around about five pound a piece over or I sell them for around about five pound a piece anyway. Um you can do them out of obviously this is a piece of burr elm, so it's nicely figured. They always mm -hmm. look better with a highly figured wood or a nice colourful wood like uh, purple heart or padauk. Uh resin works really well um for for doing the, the key rings, um, I can't have had these kits for I don't know how many or thousands of them, uh, so I don't know where you get them from now. Probably get them from the likes of Procraft in the UK, yeah, maybe Procraft Craft Supplies, Axe Craft Supplies, well. um, <laughs> Craft Supplies over in the States. I'm not very sure about Australia. So, there we are, guys. Um, okay, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, that's uh, um, a good time to, to stop, I think. I'll just show you the, the finished bowl again, and then we can shoot off and grab a bottle of wine. Which is <laughs> flavoured coffee. Flavoured coffee. Oh, flavoured coffee. coffee. Sorry. Flavoured coffee. Sorry. It, it actually, it, it's funny enough, my flavoured coffee comes in a green bottle. <laughs> Don't know what that's about. There you go, guys. Oh, yeah. That's all there. Garrett, so the, the grain is... Whenever I display my piece, <coughs> I always have the grain running horizontal. For some reason, I, I just like it when the, when the grain's running horizontal rather than like that. I don't like the grain running vertical. much prefer it running horizontal. And the amount of times when I go into the shops and do shop duty, that I've got to bloody rearrange the bowls because they've got them at every which bloody angle, which is annoying. Oh, Shug has got dressed up specially for the occasion. I'll just bring the guys back in. <clears throat> and there he is. <laughs> right then, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for 
for sticking with it. Um, is Vader. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up 25 past nine, so I'm going to call it the day there. Next week, I'll probably do another wee uh, thing for craft fairs, but I'll concentrate more on doing the, the crackle effect. Cool. And on that, I am going to press the button. Night-night, everybody. See you later.